Esas de ma. Esas fieles that do not possess, not described by their, by, by, by a presence, a double ma. By what? I'm sorry. By presence. But we say in Ban, the, the, the emphasis is that each feeling is identifying its presence at all kinds of different levels, but still there's a Dhammatiyas Dover Ma. In, 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 in Ma, Madrid of Ma, there is not that as aspect, that element. There's Asas Feelings, present, and there is not a necessity for each one to identify its presence. So these, the whole, the, the whole terminology is is, uh, is a little bit uh, out out of of, uh, of our orientation. It's counterintuitive. So I want to explain. We should have a little background, a little way of relating to this, which is not new. We already discussed it many times. The principle of this whole concept is this which we quote from the Rambam all the time that there is a Motsu Rishi Mamsi Kol Nimtsu and that is the basis of all knowledge of all Chach what is the significance of this of this knowledge for the, for the purposes of Chach of course, you have to believe that there is a, a, a very ill. But why is that? Why is that the basis of all knowledge? So, the the, the, the principle is that <coughs> okay. There are two things that Ramon says over here. That everything that exists was created. And this we say in the Chumash, Bereshit, Baruch, Hashem, 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 Hashem. Everything was created. The world is not a pre-existent um, a- entity. It came to be at some point in time because God created it. Then there's another element that we also have to know. That there is, that, that, that God, you have to know something about God. What is it? that he is a first being. A first being. And what does it mean, a first being? So we discussed many times. A first being means that he like a pre-exists. In other words, he does not have that element of coming into existence. We have no way of grasping, all, all grasp, all seichel, the, the principle of grasp of Hasoga is, as we discussed many times, is that you can go outside of their entity and see where it's coming from, what is its purpose, how it is made, and that's how you grasp it. The simple illustration of it is how you grasp a table. You go outside the table and grasp it by its, by its outer boundaries. You can't grasp a table by its where it is present. You can rest it by starting where it is not present. This is all seichel, this is all grasp. This causes this, it brings you this, it results in this, and so forth. Motsu Rishi means he has no means to grasp because he's a Rishi. And we have to understand this. <coughs> everything, he created everything. And everything that he created comes from him, which means that everything that he created is rooted. He, he, he has, he, he possesses it. But in what way does he possess it? Does he possess it in a manner that it was an add-on, it came to him? No. He is a, he is a first being. By him, everything is, is pristine. Everything is original. Not 
coming into being. It was not preceded by not being. This is what the most is. So, taking this as the, the next step. Anything that came into being, that was created, by definition, has two elements in it. Its presence and its purpose. On its purpose. In more subtle terms, its presence and the presence of its creator within it. In other words, it's truth. Why? How did it come into being? There's an element of the creator in it. The creator initiated it. This is Pnimius and Hitzenius. What is the intent? What is the purpose? That's a Pnimius. What is its presence? How does it make itself known? How do you identify it? How do you grasp it? This is all the Hasodi. This is its coming. So the Pnimius, the Pnimius represents the Creator's aspect in this element. Therefore, Pnimius, by definition, has much less <laughs> definitive presence. It has an element of the Creator, an element of the of the pristine truth. Because everything in the Creator is, is pristine. <clears throat> so in everything that was created, there is Pneumis and Hitzenius. But that is true in a created entity. Like we say, Islapsus oil is Bekele. There is the oil and there is the Kele. The Kele is the Hitzenius, the oil is the Pneumis. Then we're saying that really the essence here is the ma. Okay, uh, step back a moment. So when we look at it at that level, that the Kaili is the Hitzanius and the oil is the Pnimi, there we can readily say that um, this Pnimi, this oil, which actually represents the atom, the source, the creator, has an element, the element of the sphere that it illuminates, of the keli in which it, in which <coughs> it's mislabish, by virtue of the fact that it's mislabish in the keli. But th so therefore, this is this sphere already can be identified because it it's yeah. mislabish in the case. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hello. I don't understand the last thing you said. What does it have by virtue of the fact that it's mislabish in the case? It has it has a sphere definition because in this first being there are no definitions of any kind. So when we say that there is Pneumis and Hitzanius because of the oil of Bikalim, so there we could say, we can understand that in Pneumis there is also a sphere of definition, because the oil is mislabish in the cave. But now we're coming to something totally subtle, totally um, um, uh, uh, devoid of any presence. We're saying in the oil itself there is Pneumis and Hitzanius. Pneumis akav, Hitzanius akav. So when you say that the, the, um, the, in, uh, that there's Pnimi Zakav, and, and, and Pnimi Zakav, as we're going to say, see, there, there are Esospheres, but do they have a presence? Mm -hmm. They're all representative of the Etzim. There is no Metzius. Because in the Etzim, there's no Metzius. Mitzias begins, as you said, Mitzias is the pshat, there is a moment where it's not, a moment where it is. 
And this contrast makes it a mitzvah. But when it doesn't, there is not that, that contrast. In, in what way is it present? And this is the Indian that we that we are going to try and, and that is going to ex- explain to us the Pnim is Akav and Akav. Okay, so let's go inside now. We are on top of page Tess. So can I just ask this last question that you posed? You're saying we c- we're saying that normally we can't understand that in Reuter itself there is Phanemius and Chitzonius, but in the Kav it's more difficult? No. In Oir itself it is difficult. Oir in okay. Kaili we understand. But then a cloud, Primus and Chitzonius, is when there is a Mitzvah. Chitzonius is the Mitzvah, and Primus is the that which makes it a Mitzvah, that to be, originates it. What, what is its cause and, and, and purpose? That's a simple way of putting it. Okay. Uh, so the Indian from Mao Ban, the Rebbe says, at the end of the previous page, and we're going right over to the next page, page 10, that there is Chitzoni is Hakav and Pnimi is Hakav. The Mizen, where as a result, and from this, from this dichotomy within the Kav itself, Yeish Be'as Esfireis, Bechines Chitzini Yuson, or Bechines Pnimi Yuson. There is, that provides and this is and results that in the Asaspheras there is the Bechines Chitzonius of the as, of the Sphira and Pnimis in the, in the Sphira. Which is not, as we said before, Mao Ban, there's Chasodim Hamagulim, Chasodim Hamchusim. It's um, in, in, um, which deals with the slapshus in the lab, the slapshus in the keli. Now we're talking about the oil itself. And in the sphere itself, there is Bechines Chitzeni Yuson and Bechines Pni Yuson. Within the same sphere. Now, here's where we have, we have to understand what the difficulty over here is. Since we're talking about the oil. And oil is representative, is an emanation of the etzim. It does not have chitzenius. It does not come into being. It represents the truth of the atom itself. <coughs> so where is the chitzenius and the pneumius? This is what we're going to discuss. Now. The hine. Yes, here at this point is a, a term that can be used to have to imply only or. This oil. We're talking about. The, the sometimes sphere as, as they are in the cub. Sometimes sphere seems to mean uh, or and kalim. Yeah, but there is there is sphere at the higher level. That's the sphere as the ma. That's what we're trying to point out. And the sphere is the ba. And the sphere is the ma. Then the sphere is the ma, which are sphere as they are part and parcel of the oil itself. And the sphere is the <coughs> ba, ma, and ban, as identified on many different levels. We identified them as we said before, the areas became. And now we're coming saying that really there is an, an, an element of ma and ban identifiable within the oil itself. That's what we are coming to. In the cup. Because in the cup there is <coughs> Pimis Chitzenis. As a result of that, there is Pimis Chitzenis in the spheres. Now we have to be explained how in the cup there is Pimis Chitzenis. The cup is the oil inside. How do we have a Pimis Chitzenis in, in, in cup? Okay. So this was just an introduction to this challenging Indian that we are going to be discussing. 
Hakav. For we have to understand that the Kav, who bivchines mitzius oir, has an element bivchines mitzius oir. He is in that status that's called mitzius oir. What is this? What is this saying? Mitzius means a presence. A presence means that there is a something, there is an identifiable presence, which means that you can identify it from not being into being. That's what Mitzias is. And the Kav is Bivchinas Mitzias. It is, it is in that status. It has that quality of being a Mitzias of Oir. Not just being the primary truth that does not need to have a mitzvah, but no, it is bebchines mitzvah. It does have a quality of 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 mitzvah. Okay, so far, I got you with me. Ad shenikra to the extent that the kav is called. Gam b'shem yesh It is true in a very, in a very subtle and very qualified manner to refer to the kav with the term of yesh me'ayin. So clearly, if it, if we can apply the term yesh me'ayin, that means that there is a contrast of not being into being. Therefore, it has a mitzvah. <clears throat> okay, let's stop for a moment and uh, and understand the difficulty that we have faced here. The kav is mibchin. He says mibchin as mitzvah. Said, "Ach and yikra b'shem yesh meyayin." Now. The Kav is Oyer Leki. Elokus, by definition, Elokus, what do you mean by Elokus? Elokus means that this is the primary truth. You don't have to prove Elokus. You have to prove everything else. Elokus, you don't have to prove. Like we always quote from the Rambam. The first um, the, the, inside, I said at the beginning of all existence is to know that there is a first being. How do you know the first being? That that you don't have to prove. First being that that is the reality itself. That's a, a very general overview. A lacus means that the, that which does not require to be proven. We discussed it recently a lot. <coughs> this is something which is inherently um, represented by the presence of, of life, by the presence of Nishon. And here we say that the Kav is both. It's a Lakus, and yet it is a Metzius which Metzius means it makes itself known. I'm you see, I'm here, and that's how you know that I'm here. That's my presence is proof that I'm here. That's what Mitzi you say. That which... Uh, say it could be that it's not there. Right, well, that's what Mitzi is. But the point is, even if you don't think in terms of it could be not there, the point is that it has to announce its presence. And of course, it doesn't have to announce its presence in order to be. Mm-hmm. But the Rabbi Falkino? Yeah? Uh, the Rabbi Falkino said that the Kav is both. 
that the Kav does, quote unquote, come into being or not? The answer is both. But you have to follow. You you're not going to jump jump uh, the the runner. You have to follow the okay. way the Rebbe presents it to us. Okay. The kav is bebchines mitzius oir. Oir, as we discussed already, and we're going to still discuss. Oir means that this is the etzim, the presence of the etzim. Presence of the etzim does not come into mitzius. That's the etzim. And yet we say the kav is bebchines mitzius oir. Ach and nikro gam b'shem yesh miayin. Even to the extent that it can be properly, in a certain qualified manner, called yesh me'ayin. Yesh me'ayin clearly means that you're talking about something that comes into being. Um, from ayin. What does that mean it's coming into being from ayin? that from I it means that it does not carry its basis from being from its source. It's simply announcing its own presence. Like like a yesh, like this. This is a yesh. Yes, we know somebody made it in the sofa, but its presence is not dependent on that, the fact that somebody made, made it. You see it because you see it. Let's meet Yesh Mayai. That's Mamisha Mitzis. Same thing with the Kav. Well, <laughs> look at the words. You have to understand what. Ad she nikro gam b'shem Yesh Even to the extent that it's called even Yesh Mayai. That means that we are qualifying this. If we are going to compare the Kav to this, forget it. Let's close the book. I'm giving to understand what the termina- what we're trying to say over here. But it's but it is ah to the extent In other words, that is not really a proper way to describe the calf. But there is an element in the calf from a certain perspective. There is a mitzvah element in the in the calf. And even to the extent that it can, in some subtle, in some very subtle and qualified way, be described as Hashem Yai. Yashem Yai means that the presence of the cup is quite different in contrast to it, to to its source. Compare comparable to its source, it's a yesh in comparison to I. Ayin, you are very familiar with the term ayin. Now we can we can uh, uh, really focus in and understand the terminology. Ayin means nothing. It's meant nothing, not a presence. It means it is just there not by virtue of announcing its presence. It's there by virtue of the fact that that's the truth. It doesn't have to announce its presence. It just means ayin. What's funny? So like I need a pep talk to kind of, we can really, under, that we can try to, you know, like what? something that, uh, this is something that we're shy to. I feel very unshy to this uh, right now. I apologize. I'm not trying to drag your No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, you know, it was your choice to learn I Bay the second time, right? <laughs> um, yes, sir. We're still 
Pepsi. Pepsi. We don't know it's there, but it has its impact. So something which is looking is it's always there and it's always having an effect, but we're not conscious of it. Well, who they say something else, you're saying, I'm not enticed by it. Why should I be interested in this? That's what he's saying. He's coming from a completely different angle. He is coming from Boropak, really. There's a principle in the Superior Kabbalah speaks about it a lot. And if you learn Chesidus and you are not attempting to apply it to yourself, then the number one, the learning is false, not correct, you're not correctly understanding. Mm -hmm. And number two, it, you can't even pursue it well. Why? Because just as we are saying the whole time, what is the basis of all knowledge? That there is a first being, which this is the, the first being that we know before we even start. Who knows that? You say who? The neshama. The neshama comes into, into play when you start applying it. You start saying, oh, who am I? What's my life about? Then you have the basis for the whole, for the, for, for this whole, for, for the whole process of Torah learning. If we are taking, if we, if we, if we are not applying it to ourselves, we just want to know, have information. Information is in the world only. As we pointed out many times, you learn in Torah, you learn halacha, and it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I have to accept it, because if I don't accept it, I'm going to get malchus, or I'm going to get gain. I mean, that's not what, what the Torah is about. So, to bring it back home, what, how do you react? How does your nervous react, in conscious, whatever, when you, if you contemplate that you are in fact a derivative and evolution for a monkey, can you face yourself as such? That you are. That you are a monkey, an advanced monkey. A monkey in salt. Just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference whether you're an advanced monkey or a human being? Open form. <laughs> huh? What's the difference? The monkey also has a nephesh. It's alive. What's the difference to you? Why do you say, oh, this is ridiculous? have a different mission. You define a monkey by uh, function. I stand for something. If I'm a human being, I really, if I'm not, you know. I have a true purpose, a real, a real reason for being. Not just a natural uh, presence. I relate to the first being, to the first, to the creator. I have the, I, I'm relating to the basis of all existence. That's what I'm doing. That's what I am. That's the difference. A human being relates, goes out of the world in terms of his presence, on the basis of his existence, to the creator himself. I'm here with a mission. 
And if I lose mission, I lose interest in life. That's exactly what happens to a human being. Never happened to a monkey. Even the most, quote unquote, advanced monkey. Even a chimpanzee? Even a chimpanzee, even a human monkey. Even a baboon. The human monkey has, has set itself a purpose to reduce all human beings to monkeys. As long as he's got that purpose, he's alive, you know, he has, he's got the impetus. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there's no, a human being cannot live without a purpose. Therefore, it's incumbent and it is a, a, a draw to a human being to relate and to know, to recognize what is this truth that he represents? What is this truth that gives his life meaning? So that this is his purpose here, his function is to bring that truth into the world. Ready? Okay, so the car is between his materials oil. Even to the extent that the calf can be called Yeshmeyan. And that is how do we uh, 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 relate? How do we justify referring to the Kav as as Yeshmei? In what way is it Yeshmei? And why is it a Mitzis? This is Oyer Aliki. And Aliki, again, Aliku, so this is the primary being. However, I know Lefi, and it is because I'm Shocho, say who, Al Yidei Hatsim Tzum. Because at the Kav is Nimshach, Al Yidei Hatsim Tzum, Vaya, and Vaya the Tzim Tzum is not even correct, um, a, a correct translation of the word Al Yidei. Al Yidei means by, by the effect of the Tzim Tzum. By means of? By means, by the effect of the Tzim Tzum. Not just through the Tzim Tzum, but by the effect of the Tzim Tzum. The Tzimtzum permits yeah. their becoming a cup. Is this all referring back to what we said that the Chavez is Gilui? That there's... This what? Didn't we say that the Chavez is Gilui? That this is the... Um, you have to put things in context, okay, because okay, we say yeah, all kinds of terminology. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not ashamed to do it. Mitzvah Soya before. Okay, fine. I will show up. All right. I'm the fish. I'm the chosy. Who are they? Had seen so. Because I'm the shock of the cab is all they had seen so. What is it seen so? All they had seen so by the effect of the seen so. What is that? How is that explained? Anything? The hine. Leaf neat sim tum. Before the sim tum, ha coil, kol lo beat smusi is borch. Everything is incorporated and part and parcel, part of at smusi itself. That smusi itself. Just a brief translation of these words. Before that seemed to mm. before they seemed to 
so to speak, there is everything. But it is kolul, it is incorporated, included in Asmus itself. And I'd like to give it a little bit of a, of a meaning. You have no understanding of Atmos. But we need to understand the term Hakoil, everything. And this we can understand from our own experience, from our own, experience, from our own world. We know that in the world there are creatures, microbes, living, living cells. You could say ad infinitum. There's absolutely no number as to different kind of cells, different kind of, of living creatures. That's living creatures. Then you go to the plants, you go to the to different different rocks and different. Uh, absolutely no, the variety is, is beyond contemplation. After all is said and done, can, do we say that the variety, the possibilities are now exhausted? Absolutely no, no, never. The possibilities are never exhausted. It's an interesting thing. And the important thing is, in terms of, of our understanding, this is where, where our seichel comes in. We meet up with different varieties all the time. And despite that, oh, I've never seen anything like this. We get accustomed very quickly. Oh, it's not that I know. It's a, it's a, interesting. It's you know this and we go in the zoo because uh, like a kangaroo. We here we see kangaroos in the zoo because uh, they are they are prevalent in the street. But another kind of a creature that has that, and um, it's a creature that falls into the category overall categories that fit that fit into the world. And after a while, yes, of course, we can see how it's part of the world. The world, per se, can accommodate and incorporate an infinite variety. Let us not contemplate just the, the, this one thought. This union that the world can accommodate and incorporate infinitely a variety, in what way is it present in the world? Is that infinite possibility a presence in the world, or is it not a presence in the world? The way we look at it from Hitsoinius, we say it's not a presence. The reason you can put an infinite right into the world is because the world stands for absolutely nothing. It is nothingness, it is emptiness. So therefore, anybody who wants to come can can grab a, a seat in emptiness. Right? Is anybody with me or? I'm just lost in, in the just a little phrase, world in darkness. Well, no, no, I'm not saying there's nothing I'm, I'm asking, how do we pursue it? I'm not concluding anything. It could be argued, and this is what our friends, the scientists, will argue. There is nothing to it. According to them, anything that comes into being has f fights for its right to be. There is no basis, there's no right for it being. It fights for its right to be. And this is why it's in constant competition with everything else. It's called survival. 
Yeah, the constant permutation. What does that have to do with um, a, a po all, you know, a, all unlimited possibilities? I mean, how are the two even comparable? You're saying is the world, does the unlimited possibilities have a presence in the world? And and then and then where does the whole thing come in with by survival of the fittest? I don't I don't understand even the how one relates to the other. How does the world accommodate infinity? You could have infinite varieties of animals. How of how is it possible? What from what perspective? How is it how is it what is mm. in the world that allows it to, to accommodate that? You didn't hear my question. Okay, so either either it's the fact that anyone, the world is is an absolute nothing, and anything can or does it, or, yeah, or, or, it, or it itself or it, or is it representing it. some kind of that's it, right. everything. Yes. That's right. Oh, you're right. You didn't get to the second half. Yet. No, not yeah, not not for a second. Saying it being nothing does accommodate. It does accommodate. Then everything has to fight for itself. Okay. So now let us think, please together. If we would take on the the the, the scientific perspective that there is no provision in the world for, for anything. Everything has provided for itself. This is the way they see it. It's a crazy world. But that they agree. They say it's a crazy world. Everything is fighting everything else. All the time. But besides that, how do we human beings get acclimated to it? How do we relate to it? Every time you find as a, a, a new creature, oh, uh, so that displaces me, that makes things completely out of whack. The fact is, this is the important thing, the fact is, we live quite comfortably. We are very calm, and when we find a new creature that we never met, we, we look at it and say, okay, we have we have room for that, for that and for many more, and for infinitely more. The reason for that is that we really perceive that the world is a creation, a godly creation. There's a motivation in mamzikol nitzu. And this truth has everything. If it comes into being, so it revealed what it, what it has. If it doesn't come into being, it didn't reveal what it has. But in, in, in essence, it has everything. If a human being, if a person, like we say all the time, right, you speak English, or any of the Western languages, Hebrew is a universal Western language. And you go to China and start, you can learn Chinese. I mean, there's absolutely no similarity whatsoever. I don't know if their alphabet consists of 22 letters or 5,000 letters. <laughs> and you can learn it and you can make sense of it. Because in your soul also there is the infinity of it. <coughs> everything is there. Why is everything in there? Because everything comes from Amitis Himotse, from the truth of His presence. And this is why there is really, it, it, it never exhaust the possibilities. Never. And when we look at things, we look at it, what we see is not the possibilities, we see this infinity that we spoke about yesterday. That is what we really see. Which is why it lends itself to be observed instantaneously without any difficulty. How can it be? No, we never have this question, how can this creature be? It's there, it's there.
in in Oishe is a kabbala in 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 the Chaim from Zadiza when he describes the Tzimtzu describes the Tzimtzu of as follows. There was a Tzimtzum in Oyrin Seif. Who, who, does, who describes this? In, in Ariz, the Arizal, in, in Eitzchai. There was a Tzimtzum in Oyrin Seif. Benas Echol Olomokim Pomer. Everybody came across this, right? Benas Echol Olomokim Pomer. And that provided for a Echol Olomokim Pomer. Because before, before that it was oil in Sarah Malako Mokim Achol. And therefore the Hoya Mokim and his oil was there was no place for the world. Then it was a Tsimtsu. When I say Holo Mokim Pomer, and that provided for a Holo Mokim Pomer, and this became the place for Amidas Oil. The Tsimtsu means the Silic? Yeah. This is the Mokim Achol, and then came in the car? Yeah. Yeah, this is Mokim Pomer. I just see it. So, it's interesting. He says, Cholon or Mokimpon. What's a Cholon and what's a Mokimpon? Can you translate? Cholon means emptiness. Mokimpon means a vacant space, vacant place. Think with me, what is the difference between these terminologies? Looks very similar to me. No, but you have to think a little, a little bit. What's a call? You call it mokam. What's a mokam? A vacant place. It's got the basis. It's got the In the basis. street, it's got the basis of is the street a vacant place? This chair, if the chair was not occupied, but okay, this is a vacant place. Vacant place is something is missing. A vacant place is not missing. A vacant place is within a context. And the context provides for, for this to be, let's make a place, a mock. Hollow provides for nothing. Doesn't? Hollow provides for nothing. It doesn't provide for anything. It's just nothing. But we said nothingness does not exist at some point. <laughs> A vacuum, emptiness. Emptiness. The word hollow, I think, comes from it. Okay, that's right. <laughs> so, what is the one of these two terminologies? Because, in fact, this provided for two perspectives. A hollow perspective huh. and a mocking pony perspective. Mocking pony is the perspective of Kiddush. There's everything there, but it's provided for. It's provided for because everything has a place in Atmos. Hollow doesn't need a provision, it provides for itself. There's a plain emptiness, and I go and I grab my place. This is essentially, I just want to say it, Oyer and Kaylee. Kaylee is like a hollow. Oyer is, is in mocking. In mocking. Oyer has a message. Okay, I went a little too far, but I just wanted to give the entire perspective for those who want to contemplate it. Yeah. So, from this last thing you're saying, there's two perspectives. Yeah. That this expression in Kabbalah is not describing two different stages, but two different ways of looking at what, what was there as a result of the symptom. But I'm not going any further in this. Okay. Just want to explain that the, the, the reality of our creation is is, um, is in a mocking pony. Mocking pony means there's provision, a place. That's what I say in Russian there's in there is there is room in, in any language. There is room to say. What do you mean there is room to say? Conceptually, 
this can this can be contemplated even before it comes into being. What's mean there's room mocking. There's a mocking for it. There's room for it. There is room. That's what he says. Everything. What's meant everything? Everything means everything. Infinite <coughs> and beyond infinite variety. And it's called an atmos. Because there is no 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 outer limit at all to what what about the possibilities are. Why? Because it's a, it's it's, it's a, the, the mocking for everything is provided by by Yalukus, by by Yatsmus, by the truth. Therefore, there is no limit. So when we say, okay, this was all to explain these words, Hakol Kol Yatsmus. Everything is called. Was meant every, when you say everything is called, before it came into being, in what way is it called? This is the, because because uh, <coughs> Atmos inc- allows for everything, so even though there was nothing there. So when you say there is room, it means there is room for everything. Yeah. That's what you say. Yeah, but there's, there is room for everything. Everything has a has a place, has a can relate. <coughs> the Ramam, okay, let's go back to the Ramam. The Amit is Himote Nimsu Kolabim, so from the truth of His presence, all all presence came into being, which means that everything that exists can trace back, can relate to to something, to a true, to to a godly truth. This is what gives it a presence. Sirius explains, we learned it in, in the Ramesichas, that even Amolek, who, uh, Amolek, as we learned in the past, right, we have an image bay, is also rooted in Kedush. Also has a place. Otherwise, it couldn't exist. What's the reason to use the term Beatmus or Yisbore, the two together? Because the only way. What, what was what was the question? I didn't hear it. Akiva wants to know why we say we, we use the term that's Musa Yisborich. Why not call that Atmos? Why is that Musa Yisborich? And since Akiva asked the question, so he deserves an answer. But then Akiva, you have to put in your thinking cap. We have absolutely no access to know anything about Atmos. Zero. We can't even contemplate its presence. Because in our cycle, like we say, we can grasp only things that we can go outside of it. There's no, no way. How do we relate to Atmos? And the Ramu says, Motsu Rishi Mamsikol means. The only way that we relate to Atmos is, is through our dedication to Atmos. Mm. Atmos is not an entity, it's not a Sekhalik entity.
It is on dedication. It's on a It is nasa is what relates us to Atzmas. Nasa means we will do. If we are going to stay separate and say, okay, I'm contemplating Atzmas, that, that's um, totally irrational and totally meaningless. In order to relate to Atmos, we have to sense that Atmos is Yisbolich. Atmos, this is our reality, and this is this is who we serve. This is who we worship. This is who we pray to. This is who we praise. This is what Atmos is. Every time you mention Atmos, you say Yisbolich. Because that's the way we we can. That's the basis for us recognizing that there is such a problem. What's the translation of this word? His body is a praise word. May he be blessed. So why does it show that this is a dedication in this word? Praise. What's a praise? Praise means that you're dedicated. Yeah, you praise. Why do we praise? Because you have a relationship. You have mentioned earlier the inner of 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 light of mitzvahs. So is is it fair to to, to uh, understand it by the way of being that mitzvahs aren't logical, let's say like Tyra, but we're just doing mitzvahs out of because Hashem wants us to. It's not necessarily logical. So this connects us with that part of Hashem, which is also illogical with Atmos. Is that a correct statement? More than half the entire? It's mitzvahs. We do because we're supposed to do it, regardless of its, of its logic. Sometimes it's almost illogical. So by doing something at a pure, at, at pure compliance, we, we, we both, this allows us to be connected with that part of Hashem, which defa- defies logic, which is infinity. Is that so correct? Here's, here's the point that you're making. Compliance on what basis? Why are you complying? Because Abisha says so. So? Because you want to have what? Because this is the way it is. This is reality. It's what Abisha wants. Because of, of how we perceive it. Even if it doesn't make sense. You were compliant to the Egyptians when we were slaves over there. We don't want to be compliant. Okay, so I'm asking, what's the difference between complying to uh, to the Egyptians and complying to the Mavis? Okay, because complying to the complying to the Egyptians is not necessarily validating the Egyptians. We have no choice. Like, hey, can do it? Is validating that there's a there's a truth. Not only validating there's a truth. That we are relating to it. Yes. We're relating to it. That's what you're saying. Yes. That's why you, every time we say Atzmus is Barak, I was we say Atzmus is Barak. We just we just um, have it in the um, in what we read from the Mashiach um, Giyula that the Rambam whenever he mentions Mashiach he says Meiri Gola Omen Kin Hirot right Meiri Gola Omen Kin Hirot I found that expression <coughs> also in Rambam. In Chumash, not not. Uh, what, what's the first part of the expression? It's, it's a very Mehera uh, Yigale. Oh, Mehera Yigale. Omen Kin Hirot. Same thing. The same thing. It's a what's right. It's a direct statement. How do I know him? It's because I serve him. <laughs> I know him because of my sake. That's not stupid. And then that's not knowing at all. And if I don't serve him, then I cannot know. 
I would say, if I'm a separate entity, there's no way you can know. What's the translation of Meher Yigali? Meher Yigali, may he be revealed speedily. Okay, we just start. <laughs> okay. The Inyar Hatsimtsum, this is just a starting point, I have to interrupt. Inyar Hatsimtsum, so before the Hatsimtsum, Hakoil Kolo Biatsmusi Yisbon. Everything. I explained the, the, the term everything. It's very important to understand that everything is in Atmos Kolo Biatsmusi, but it's Kolo Biatsmusi, it's not a presence, because Atmos is everything. Atmos is. Is uh, is emes la mita the emes the emes the the emes the the infinite emes so therefore everything is there. But it's kol, which means it's part and parcel of the atom. It's not a presence. In the world, there's a presence. Then there, there is no presence. Vini had simtum, and what is in your simtum? Liyo is bebchinas itzia chus liatz musik aviyoch. The new symptom is that they should that it should come bebchinas yitzio. Also, very careful words. In a state of yitzio, chutz leatzmusei kaviyoch. There is no way you can step out of atzmus. You tofis b'kul almi. There's no way. Voles mandi nofik nishus elavar. You can't be outside of of his rishus. But the union of the Bri or Timsum is that there should be Bibhinas Itsi Husla Asmusa Kaviyoch. You should have an element, an aspect of Itsi. And as a result of this Timsu, which creates an aura, a sense of being Mechutz Le Asmus. And that becomes a mitzvah of oil. That is why oil is a mitzvah. Why is oil a mitzvah? I, I can't discuss it in, in sufficiently, but just because the primary truth is only atzmos. If you have a truth, also a truth, but it's not. The primary truth is a mitzvah. They have to make an answer. They say, "What are you? What? Who am I? What am I? How am I? What am I doing here?" That's a mitzvah. Yeah. Asmus does not have to justify itself. Asmus is the primary truth. But as a result of the tzimtzum. Which means it comes with chutz le'atz musik aviyochel. So then, nasa v'chin is mitzi yusuf. Can I ask a question here? Really? What? Can yes, I ask Barbara. a question? Go ahead. Yes? Yes. We're talking about a symptom that occurs. We're saying it's a symptom from atzmus and then comes out oyer. The symptom Normally we say is oyer ein seif. There's oyer ein seif, and then there's a tzimtzum. So we're not distinguishing here between atzmos and oyer ein seif. Leaving out tzimtzum. That's right, because that, that oil is a representative atzmos. Yes, that we'll still have a chance to talk about. Yes, the tzimtzum, as a matter of fact, is only in the oil. Atzmos cannot be in the sun. This means that last one That's right. But and oil then we're talking about as the effect of the symptom is is the oil that comes after the oil rain safe, after the symptom. From the that's right. Yeah. Is okay, this what this you talk about before you describe before is the mm -hmm. oil that's chayzer vehayer. But that that's after the symptom. That's in the cup. That we will. But the oil is also okay. calling the symptom, wasn't huh? it? But the oil. The was also calling in, in the accent, correct? Yes. Yes, of course. Everything is called that. 
then it's called it's not a mitzvah. Then, then when it's ad simtum, you have mitzvah. All right, gentlemen, this has to be it for this morning. We'll reconvene the mission tomorrow morning. Okay. Zayd is on call. Zayd is on call. Good morning. This made it possible to give the class. It's a little schmitchy. Next few days, can you send me the share? That email? Yeah, really. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I don't know, it's tough stuff. But I'm going to be in Nevada. What? Going on a business trip for today. Oh, yeah? So it's at, you have no access? I, I won't have access to his thing, but he, if he sends it by email, I can do it. My phone doesn't get it. So oh, yeah? Bum, 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 bum. Nini, na, 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 no, 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 no,